Guagamala Dance Company, which has more than 30 works to its credit, introduces audiences to contemporary takes on Southern India's classical dance traditions. Heather Longley speaks with Ragamala co-artistic director Aparna Ramaswamy about the origins of the production Song of the Jasmine. Ramaswamy talks about how the music of jazz saxophonist Rudresh Mahanthapa fits into Ragamala's mission. She also discusses Song of the Jasmine's effect on audiences around the world. Okay, well, first of all, I guess I, I wanted to get the story behind Song of the Jasmine. So it's quite a long process. We first saw... Um, Rudresh Mahantapa play at the Walker Art Center here in Minneapolis in 2007 when he was here with his band Kinsman. Mm -hmm. And that, um, the music for that album was, I'll say, a kind of a confluence of jazz and South Indian classical music, all known as Carnatic music. And it was fascinating. The music was beautiful and it was soulful and rhythmically complex. And my mother and I have had a long history of creating collaborative work across genre. And so when I saw this work, I felt that this was an artist who I, I wanted to work with. And I felt that in many ways, not only was the music very interesting to me, uh, the idea that he is an Indian American of my generation, mm -hmm. working here in a form that is very different than mine, but accessing his Indian heritage, again, in a different way than mine, really opened my eyes further to the fact that there are so many of us Indian Americans of the second generation creating work that really expresses who we are as hybrid individuals. And so that was fascinating to me, and I felt that there could be a meaningful work that would come out of this. So you say... Uh you know, the, the musicians need certain skill sets. And when you saw Rudresh, did he have to do anything to prepare himself to work with dance, a dance group? That's an interesting question because he had never worked with dance before. Okay. And so he, um, I mean, obviously he's a, he's an incredible artist. So he has the, I mean, the, the spontaneity and the artistry to, to constantly meet and match. Um, what I think he definitely did in preparation was he watched a lot of our work on video many, many times. I mean, he really um, got understood more how we use Carnatic music for dance, what our movement vocabulary is like, what our aesthetic choices are. And so he worked, um, I definitely, when I was surprised by how much he had actually seen and how much of our work I had sent it to him. Oftentimes people don't watch it. They just leave me and they'll say, oh, yeah, yeah, I'll get to it. I'll watch it at the hotel the night before or something. But he had watched a lot of it. And then he had seen, he, during that year, I think I, I was touring a solo work with live music and I was in New York and he came to see that. And he had seen my work and our work several times live, I think, by then. I think what was surprising to him, not surprising, but something he had to get used to is keeping track of the movements of the dancers while he was also leading the band. Because for us as dancers, we work with live, with live music all the time, but it's new for us in that there is so much improvisation and freedom that this particular band feels in this piece that we also have to keep track of them. But for some of these musicians, playing for dance is something very new. But when you talk about the music and what of the music was appropriate for that or what we felt was, so the Carnatic melodic modes, and they also called ragas, ragams, are filled with emotion and they evoke very specific emotions. And so when we were discussing the music with Chodresh, we decided which raga, we, so this work is in five sections, so which melodic mode each section would be in. And that provides a larger framework for the work. So through that, you can express that melody in so many different ways to evoke that mood. So I felt that the music that he was writing, plus the combination of Carnatic music and the, the emotionality of it and the freedom of jazz really inspired us to create work that mines those emotions. Has Ragamala actually performed in India? Yes, several times. And what was the feedback there? What, what's the reaction? So the reaction has been very good, very positive. Uh, our teacher, my mother and I, our teacher is kind of the most well-known practitioner of this form okay. alive today. And we are one of very few of her students, and we are her senior most students. 
So we're very, very proud of that. We work with her often. We're in touch with her all the time. The work that we do with Ragamala is more contemporary in its presentation, still extremely classical in its vocabulary and it's a certain in its um, uh, physical aesthetic, I would say, but more contemporary in its like like this, like these ideas coming from you know working with different um, styles of music or this idea coming from one place and then interpreting the idea of longing through the poetry of ancient Tamil. You know, all those ideas are very unique. And so when we present in India, people are, we were very worried, actually. We were wondering how it would be received. There is a lot of contemporary work being done in India and a lot of desire for people to find ways to personally express classical forms. And so there was a wonderful reception for our work for many reasons. I think people are, like I said, they're hungry for ensemble work and for new work. Mm -hmm. They are we have we we uphold the aesthetic the technical aesthetic and the poetic aesthetic of our teacher and so it's done without compromising the integrity of the form that's very important and often some of our narrative works include translations of english poetry and indians are thrilled to hear english because not everyone knows all of the languages that we work in and work within, and people are people are thrilled. To, and you know, we did this major dance theater work and toured it in the state of Kerala, and it's an East South Indian epic. And we did the whole thing in English. And the audience said to us, thousands of people came. And the audience said, "We can finally understand our own stories." Wow, isn't that fascinating? Yeah, that is. We also have non Indians in the group yes. who've been with us for ten years and twenty years, and they are such beautiful dancers. They interpret the forms. So, again, with that integrity and with that classicism and the freedom. And people were so, Indians were so proud to see that. Ragamala Dance Company performs Song of the Jasmine at 7.30 p.m. September 22nd in Penn State's Eisenhower Auditorium. For tickets or information, visit cpa.psu.edu or phone 800-ARTS-TIX.